everyone. I'm David Ringstrom, a CPA in Atlanta, and welcome to our presentation on advanced pivot tables. Over the course of our time to go today, I'm going to be sharing with you techniques that can help you take your existing pivot tables further by unlocking hidden functionality that you may not be aware of that is possible in Excel. We're going to see how we can get data out of access databases, for instance. We're also going to see how we can use a hidden feature in Excel. It's called the custom list feature that can let us have data in our pivot tables be sorted in a different order. So rather than having to, to always accept that alphabetical order and then change the sort order, we can have Excel automatically sort things based on a list in the hierarchy that we choose. We'll also see some ways that we can automate some of the repetitive tasks around pivot tables. With regard to our material today, I will be covering all four versions of Excel, which means Excel 2007, 10, 13, and 16. Much of what we talk about will work the same way across all four versions of Excel, but there are a couple things that will only be available in the newest versions of Excel. So when we get to those, I'll make sure that you're aware of that so you're not looking for something that can't be done in the older versions of Excel. I will demonstrate everything at least twice. So we'll first walk you through it on the PowerPoint slides, and then we'll go to Excel 2016 and carry out the steps firsthand. The handouts include a PDF of today's presentation, as well as the example workbook that has most of the examples I'll be teaching from. It also includes a related articles tab that has links to articles I've written that relate to today's material. So do try to leave you with a lot of takeaways from choosing one of my presentations. Let's begin by getting data out of an access database. The great thing about this is you don't necessarily have to have Microsoft Access installed on your computer even. You will be able to just pull data out of a database whether you have a Microsoft Access license or not. So Microsoft Access is a database software that's intended for desktop users, and it is a companion to Excel, but it also kind of marches to its own beat and can require a lot of specialized knowledge. But many times if we can get at the data that we want and get it over to Excel, then we can simply use a pivot table to summarize the data that we want. Now there is going to be a difference here depending on whether we're using Office 365 or not. So Office 365 is the subscription-based version of Microsoft Excel, or actually Office in general. By subscription, that means we pay periodically, either monthly or annually, for access to Microsoft Office. Historically, we paid once for a perpetual license, and we could use that version of Excel as far in the future as we wanted. And so historically, Excel only changed every three years. But with the subscription version, one of the inducements to get folks to subscribe is Microsoft is pushing out updates, sometimes as often as monthly, that are making changes to Excel. And so since Excel 2016 has been released, they have been tinkering with the data menu. So if your data menu, if you go to the data menu in Excel, and then step two, you have a get data command, that's a signal that you're using Office 365. So you would then step three, choose from database, and then step four, you would choose from Microsoft Access database. But for most of us that are not using Office 365, on the data menu, the first command there in place of get data will be called from access. If you have a from access command, you would choose that instead of steps two, three, and four. Once we've chosen our from access database, so either by going through the menus under get data or just by clicking at the top of the data menu, we'll then all see an import data dialog box. And so then we can double click the name of our database to skip the import button. So we could click once on it and then click import, or we can just double click and that will let us skip the import button there. To see this in Excel, here on this computer, I'm using the Office 365 version. So I want to go to my data menu. I have a get data command. So you could be using Excel 2016, but maybe the perpetual licensed version. And so you would still have the from access command there. But in my case, I choose get data. And then I'll choose from database. And then I'll choose from Microsoft Access Database. Notice I do not have to have the software installed. I, as long as I have Excel, I can then pull data in from an access database. So we'll make that choice. Here then is my import data dialog box. And so I'll go to the folder where my files are. So here's my sales data. So I could click once on this and then go and click import. Or if I simply double click, then that takes me to the next step. So what the next step will look like is I'll have a list of the tables. If I'm using Office 365, I also get a preview of the data itself. 
in all other versions of Excel, there will just be a list of the tables or queries within the database. And so you would choose the table or query. And then once you've made your selection, if you're using the older versions, you can just double click the table name to continue on. In Office 365, we'll need to click the arrow next to load. And then step eight will say load two. Now it's important that we take these steps here because if you're trying to summarize the data with a pivot table, if you just click load, then that will just load it to the spreadsheet as a list. If instead we choose load two, that's going to give us the ability to actually choose that we want to summarize the data as a pivot table. So here in Excel, here is my list of items there. I can choose sales data. Notice that if I'm using Office 365, I get a preview of that data. I can choose the load command, I can then say load two. Once I choose load two, that will bring up a dialog box from which I can tell Excel how I want to summarize this particular data. So what that dialog box will look like is an import data prompt there. And so if I chose the table, that would make it into a big list of raw data there. But in my case, I want it to be a pivot table report. So I'll make that selection. I'll then click OK. What a pivot table allows you to do is to take a list of data. Typically, it's in an Excel spreadsheet, but we're seeing it can be from other sources as well. And we'll be able to create reports from that by simply dragging and dropping things around on the screen. So we'll here we'll have our blank pivot table. We'll be able to choose fields from the database and then assemble a report from that. So in this case, here's my import data dialog box. I'll choose pivot table report. I'll then click OK. Now what may happen in Office 365 is you may also get this additional query properties panel here. So I'll try to extend the edge of it. So you may also encounter this queries and connections prompt there. And you can just simply close that. There's, you don't need to work with that particular panel there. Here's the beginnings of our pivot table. And if I wanted to summarize this data, if I click on state, for instance, notice then that it creates a row for every state. So pivot tables go and analyze the original data, and then they give us a list that has one of each of those items. If I choose sales, I now get to see the sales by state. If I wanted to go further, I could click on the city, for instance would then show me the cities where those sales occurred. And notice how instant this is. I'm simply picking the fields I want. I get that instant feedback. That's what's so great about pivot tables in Excel is they liberate us from a lot of the heavy lifting that we are accustomed to of trying to boil the data down into these summary formats. If I wanted to go even further, I could click on company name, and then I'd be able to see the company names between each city. And so pivot tables allow me to quickly take these reports. And so notice that the reports can be gathered from Microsoft Access. That even if we go back to our data menu, we also have the ability to connect to SQL Server databases and so on. And the other great thing about a pivot table is that there's nothing we can do in the pivot table that's going to flow backwards so that we can't harm the data in the database. It's a one way conduit. We're pulling data out of the database so that we can summarize it, but there's no way that we can make any change here that would somehow backflow back into the database. So just for benefit of those using older versions of Excel, I'm gonna open up Excel 2010 and then just quickly walk through those steps. So what we saw that we did was we went to the data menu. And in most versions of Excel, the first command is from access. So we make that choice. We'll then again browse to our database location, double click on sales data, you can choose the sales data table or query here, click OK. Once again, here we're going to choose to put it into a pivot table report. We'll then click OK. And as we saw, we can group it by state. We can see the sales. If we wanted to break it out by zip code. Notice that because that has numbers, zip showed up in the value section. We can take zip code and put it under state. So we could then see the sales broken out by zip code. Pretty much however we want to see the data there. So that's 
how we can kind of connect Excel to other data sources if we wish. With regard to those other data sources that we're working with, if we do want to, let's say, connect to a database, one thing we need to be mindful of is pivot tables function based on a snapshot in time.